There's going to be a lot of pressure on him to either not respond or really dampen down that response. For the sake of, as you heard Robert Fox saying there, the, the concern of this escalating into a major sustained problem. Will he listen, do you think? Israel faces a major dilemma, and it faces a major dilemma because what happened last night was not normal. This was an unprecedented attack directly from Iranian soil, over 300 missiles and UAVs, combined with simultaneous attacks from Yemen, from Iraq, from uh, Lebanon, and there would have been from Gaza as well if we hadn't destroyed Hamas's weapons capabilities. Now, on the one hand, the allies that helped Israel fend off this unprecedented attack clearly do not want to see an escalation. We don't either. But on the other hand, Israel cannot allow ballistic missile attacks from Iran to become the new normal. You know, it's been over 20 years that we've had a drip, drip feed of rockets from the Gaza Strip and the international community saying it's normal that terrorists can fire rockets at Tel Aviv whenever they want. You need to show restraint and not escalate. And that brought us to the horrific situation of October 7th, where Hamas felt emboldened and free to attack, thinking that the world would tie Israel's hands behind its back. And Israel needs to show deterrence against Iran now. Because we can't allow a situation in which the next time Iran wants to flex some muscles against Israel, it knows that the new normal is that it can fire ballistic missiles at Israel. That isn't a reality. Israel will accept. It's definitely not a reality that Britain would accept. So what do you think Israel will do next? Well, I know that Israel has already called for an urgent meeting of the UN Security Council. Uh, it is demanding that it condemn Iran's attack and formally designate the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guards, as a terrorist organization. We hope that the unprecedented cooperation that we saw with regional partners yesterday, not only the UK, the US, France, media reporting that even Jordan and Saudi Arabia intercepted airborne threats, that that cooperation will bring together a global coalition against Iran. Understanding it isn't this one-off attack, it's been over 30 years that Iran has been building an empire of proxy forces in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Gaza, all around the region, to try to encircle Israel and to try to choke it and destroy it. That is Iran's goal. Iran wants to destroy Israel. And Iran wants to destroy Israel because it knows that Israel is the only thing standing between it and regional domination. And so the Israeli government is going to have to make some very difficult choices now about how to respond to Iran in a way that makes clear you cannot fire ballistic missiles at Israel and get away with it, even if Israel is phenomenally successful at intercepting them, but not escalating this into an all-out war that none of us want to see, because we know how devastating that would be. We're here on the ground and we will have to suffer it. Yeah, but I mean, that's the issue, isn't it? You talk about deterrence. Um, and look, people will, under, people will understand that. What, what we struggle with, being outside of the region, what we struggle with with some of this is how, how you can you know, show that deterrence, how you can show strength, how you can show this shouldn't become a norm without it simply becoming just a lose-lose situation. And that's a very difficult balancing act that Israel is going to have to try to solve. Uh, but, uh, you know, while Israel is carrying on with a keep calm and carry on mentality, and in Israel you're not seeing mass panic in the streets, there needs to be tough deterrence against Iran, and that response has to be regional. It has to be global. The world has to close ranks and tell Iran you cannot continue this aggressive activity of arming terrorist armies to the teeth in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, in Gaza, in uh, Yemen, all over the region. The same proxy forces that have been attacking British ships in the Red Sea, the same uh, uh, proxy forces that have been attacking uh, other international interests around the region, there needs to be tough deterrence. And, uh, you know, you say for people outside the region, it's difficult to imagine. Uh, you know, I imagine viewers at home in the UK can't begin to imagine a scenario in which a country fires 300 ballistic missiles and UAVs at Britain. Now, I know if that were to happen, Britain wouldn't say, well, you know, toodle pips, never mind, let's turn the other cheek. There would be a response because you cannot simply fire ballistic missiles at the sovereign territory of a democratic country and get away with it. Iran needs to be put in its place 
And it's important that Iran be put in its place with a regional coalition and not by Israel standing alone. And right, yesterday right. was definitely encouraging to see All that right, regional let, response. Let, let me ask you about that then, because how do you get a regional response against Iran when, you know, the, 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 from what we see, our perception at least is that the vast majority of the region around Israel is going to be more pro-Iran than pro-Israel. Now, the, the, global, the global view may be different, but how do you generate a regional response in a region that seems to be anti-Israeli? The geopolitical lines in the Middle East are now between Israel and the moderate Arab nations against Iran and its axis of terror. Iran has invested billions in Hezbollah, Hamas, the militias in Iraq, the Houthis in Yemen, creating this crescent that is trying to surround Israel and threatening other Arab countries. Let's remember, Saudi Arabia has already suffered cruise missile attacks from Iran on an oil field just a few years ago. Our neighbors, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, are just as concerned about Iran as Israel, and they're concerned about Iran even before it gets nuclear weapons. And Iran could be very close to doing it. Fundamentally, Israel has far more in common with countries like Jordan, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia in terms of their basic strategic interests, strategic interests that we share with the West and Britain containing Iran, than there are differences between us. So what we need to see is partners around the world helping with the process of normalization. Remember, before this war, we had a process that brought peace between Israel and Morocco and, and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. We were on the brink of an agreement with Saudi Arabia. And that momentum has to continue. Part of what has been bringing these countries together is, first of all, the Arab countries' realization that they've benefited nothing from boycotting and sidelining Israel, but also because we share a common threat. The Iranian regime that has been filling our region with terrorist armies, sowing chaos and instability, to try to advance its cause of regional domination and the pursuit of nuclear weapons.